A few weeks ago, my dad sent me this video of a wooden spinning top whistling as it spun. It instantly grabbed my attention. How does something so small make so much sound for so long? I had no idea how it worked, but I had to have a go at designing and 3D printing my own. And I got a little obsessed. Thanks, Dad. The project has three main components to be designed, the spinning top itself, the whistling component, and finally the launcher so you can get it up to speed quickly. The top is a simple shape that gives me plenty of room to play with the internal geometry in order to try to make it get that whistle or scream as it spins down. But how do you even design a whistle? Well, it turns out, as with many things, it's a lot more complicated than you might think. If you feel like going down the rabbit hole, check out this Wikipedia page on the physics of whistles. There are so many different geometries which can create a sound way more than I ever imagined. Everything you need to know can be found here, but honestly, I'm just a humble industrial designer who likes to make cool things, so I'm gonna go down the route of research, prototype, test, refine, and continue on that loop until I get the result I want. These were my first prototype. Each has three capped holes on the side of various depths and geometries. One is a straight parallel bore, and the other two taper out inside to give a larger chamber with a smaller opening. I also wasn't sure if they would need additional mass to spin properly because they are 3D printed plastic, so I included three smaller bores in the top where I was going to fit M5 screws. But it turns out I didn't need them, and these will be important later. The stems are 3D printed separately to give them a much better strength because it's stronger in that alignment, and they just press fit in. Winding the tops on the launcher is pretty easy. I just copied an old school launcher from old photos I found online, and there is ample room to get a fair few turns of nylon string onto it. And just a tip, be sure to use a good quality plastic string. I used a nylon cord, and you wanna make sure the tip doesn't fray, so you can actually just melt it gently and carefully using a flame, and then with wet fingers, just squish the tip into a point. To make sure it always goes into the hole at the top of the spinning top. Just please don't burn yourself. In these first three tests, I found that when spinning really fast, they all made a quite high pitch noise, but one in particular made two tones at different rotational speeds, which I found very interesting. Three, two, one. So encouraged, I went ahead and made a huge variety of weird looking tops with different geometries to see how they would behave. Unlike many woodwind instruments, you can't really force air down a restricting path to increase its velocity here, they're just spinning. So that does limit the geometries that will work quite a bit. I just wanted to try a lot of different ideas I had and then go with the ones that showed some potential. Again, I'm just trying random things here. I don't really know the physics of what I'm doing, but it's fun to try. Well, that batch was a failure. Some of the tops make a somewhat interesting whooshing sound, but it's not really a whistle, it's more of just a lot of air sounds. It was at this point that I realized, as much of you watching have already made the connection, that the holes I didn't end up using at the top of my first spinning tops were responsible for the high pitch whistle, not the side geometry. Although with the one that makes two tones, I think it's the side and the top whistles making those tones. And covering the top ones up with tape, confirmed this uh, hypothesis. Okay then, back to the drawing board and time for more research. To help me out on my quest to make a whistling spinning top, I ordered something very special on eBay and it showed up a week later. Ta-da! This is a vintage humming top, a popular tin toy from the 1950s. I doubt this one is actually that old, but it's clearly well used and check this out. With a few swift pumps of the built-in spinner, it starts to generate this really unearthly tritone hum. It doesn't need to spin very fast at all to generate it, and it, what's really interesting to me is that the tone's frequencies seem fairly fixed despite the decreasing velocity. <laughs> Instead of changing pitch like I would have expected, they sort of gradually just drop off in amp amplitude till they stop one by one. So how does this thing generate such low, loud tones for so long? Well, 
it's hollow. The hole inside of the top is actually forming a chamber resulting in a phenomenon known as Helmholtz resonance. And it's this chamber which my first feeble attempts lacked. They were just little bores. And it turns out that after a little more research, this approach with a chamber and little slots on the side has been used all around the world to create a whistling sound in a spinning top. It's actually a rich part of human history and there's examples from cultures all around the world using materials like dried gourds, ivory and bamboo to create the same hollow geometry and quite loud whistling sound. <clears throat> Future Angus here. So I've been doing more research into the humming top because I wasn't fully convinced it was operating on the Helmholtz resonance principle because I noticed that the humming it made didn't drop off in frequency as the top slowed down unlike the other spinning tops I've been playing with. And it turns out they do operate a little bit differently and they actually have little uh, reeds in them. So I'm gonna put a really good link in the description to how these humming tops work. However, the spinning top I'm making does work on the Helmholtz resonance principle. And as I said, there's so many different ways to make whistling sounds, it's absolutely crazy. But anyway, back to the video. It's actually pretty cool thinking like a thousand years ago, people were making these hollow whistling spinning tops and it must've just been almost magic to them how it made that sound. I think that's really fascinating. And in fact, the video my dad sent me, the one that kicked all of this off, was of a Thai bamboo whistling top. So I set out to work making my final revisions to my design based on my newly acquired knowledge. This top has two rectangular slits with sharp chamfered edges opening up into a hollow chamber inside the top. The process of launching the tops applies so much friction to the launcher that the original PLA version was starting to actually wear out quite quickly. So I printed a version two with actual ABS bushings and these are replaceable as they wear out because there's just so much friction in launching these. So without further ado, let's fire off this bad boy. Three, two, one. I am so happy with this thing. I love the concept of a really old idea being revitalized and innovated on with 3D printing technologies because any internal geometry is now possible. It's more of a scream in this one than a whistle. It's so loud. And in fact, it seems to have two tones. It sounds at one frequency at a higher speed, then lulls off and then settles into a slightly lower, but just as loud frequency. And then that slowly drops off as the spinning top slows down. And I printed this with six perimeters to get the mass as high as possible. And it really does spin for a very, very long time. But as I said, 3D printing technologies allows us to make almost any internal geometry. So I have a feeling we're just getting started. So I'm gonna turn things over to you guys. You can find the files below on the Maker's Muse store to 3D print this top and its launcher, as well as the Fusion 360 and step files and a blank top so you can create your own whistling geometry and see how it goes. How loud can you make it? Can you give it multiple tones at once? Is there another principle you can take advantage of in creating a whistling sound? I have no idea, but I would love to see what you come up with. So be sure to tag me at Makers Muse on Twitter with your results. It's only through your support that I'm able to continue producing content like this without taking on mobile game sponsorships and other advertisements, which I don't think anyone else wants to see. And I really do appreciate it. I've had an absolute blast learning, or should I say relearning about these toys. And I think even in our modern generation of smartphones and technology, they'll still be loads of fun for kids of all ages. If you enjoyed this video, maybe consider subscribing to Makers Muse so you don't miss any future projects, reviews, or tutorials. My aim here is to empower your creativity through technology. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.